Welcome to this ASMR edition of Tales, Tales from Outer from space. space, where we like to take stories from space from around the internet and read it aloud for your entertainment. <laughs> it's like, that's not happening. We're doing this with energy. With energy, I'm telling you. Subscribe, damn it, and all that other YouTube stuff. All the links will be down below, as per usual. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. I just want to give a quick thanks to the Tier 5 channel members and patrons. Bob the Dragon, Data Magnet, Sergeant Puma, Cat Crab Lobster, and Duck Machine. Thank you very much for the support. It is much appreciated. Story number one. Frankie, written by Arc Light Magus. To the concerned members of the Ultron Council, let me first state my credentials. I have been a xenologist for going on 200 soda cycles now. I have expertise in xenobiology, xenosociology, xenolinguistics, and even xenopsychology. I have received numerous awards from your esteemed council for my work, and I was trained and educated at some of the finest academies we have. So, with the news I'm about to bring you, I want to ensure that you have a clear understanding that I am not some, uh, well, to use the Terran phrase, crackpot, looking to advance the theory. What I will be reporting on actually happened, and I am going to be deliberately sharing my data log, which recorded the entire event. I'll be open to receiving all of your comments after my report. Now, to start. I was in deep space hauler, with my stasis cube having been chartered through the appropriate agencies. The identity of the hauler is of no importance to this report, so it is not included. What is important is that the vessel was attacked or severely damaged. Based on the information I was provided following stasis, I'm inclined to think there was damage with some natural occurrence rather than attacked. The known pirates and slavers would not have easily missed my stasis cube, even if it was placed between two shipments of crapper fertilizer. However, I only received this information somewhat anecdotally as I was released from stasis on a separate vessel. The Terran rescue vessel Fisher of Beings, to be precise. For our stellar location at that time, it made no sense. Deep space haulers often stick near the Terran territories. Well, there is a higher risk of pirates and slavers from the Terrans themselves. The likelihood of being rescued is more of a certainty rather than a mere probability. The Terran who awakened me from stasis, one junior technician first class Marcus T. Trutz, indicated that I was a sole survivor. And it was at this point that I'll engage my Adeto log. A large figure appears before the Adeto log point of view. Whoa there, take it easy. You're aboard the TRF Fisher of Beings. Can you tell me your name? I am, well, by your linguistic, I am Ballot Whiskerum, xenologist researcher of the Ultron Council. The viewpoint shifts as the viewer moves into the room. Well, that should make it a bit easier to get you home, at least. You're safe with us for now. What happened to the vessel I was aboard? No idea. They don't tell me anything down here. I just happened to find you amongst the wreckage. What galactic date did you all leave port? Um, uh, Terran or Ultron galactic calendar? Crap. I knew the interspecies calendars were still a problem, but I didn't realize that ours wasn't the same as yours. Luckily for you, I, as I said, I'm a xenologist, so I have experience with both. Um, let me see. Point of view shifts to the viewer opening up a pouch at the site and extracting a small bit of script. Per my ticket, we were due to depart on 5132.84.231 by Ultron Calendar. By Terran, I think that works out to about, uh, 2134.4.15.2. Two, one. Does that sound about right? About three weeks ago, yeah. Sounds pretty normal for the haulers, but it also means that you were probably floating for about a week on emergency power. I appreciate your species assistance efforts. It is most, uh, admirable. I believe is the correct term. Don't worry about it. And save the flowery stuff for the captain. She's the one who'll get you back home. No, no, I perceive that you misunderstood me. Terrans are unique in providing unwarranted assistance in such times of crisis, and at no fee to myself or the council. Seriously, there's no species who'd charge credits just to rescue you. 
A large being appears to have strange expression on their face. Oh yes, it is actually far more common than you realize. But none of those species operates rescue services in such a broad territory as the Terrans do. The viewer's point of view shifts and slows significantly, capturing significantly more details than previously. A being creature of an estimated half the size of the viewer, but still significantly smaller than the large being emerges at speed from a nearby corridor. The being creature appears to be long, covered in hair, and moves in four limbs, similar to a drukkard pet. However, the being creature is an order of magnitude larger than a drukkard and appears to possess many scars and metal plate at the back of its neck. The being slash creature is shown to walk around the legs of the large being before coming over to examine the viewer. Appearing to use a combination of sight, smell, and taste to the reviewer, the viewer. Sorry about that, but Frankie always gets excited to meet new people. I do not object at all, although I'm surprised that you are not more concerned for their safety. Nah, being Frankie's basically indestructible. The being creature, identified as Frankie, appears to finish the inspection of the viewer and disappears into a series of haphazardly laid tubes in the corner of the room. I was not given to understand that the Terrans kept their medical science as such to maintain their associate beings indefinitely. Is Frankie a machine? What? No. Frankie's no bot. Oh, you probably saw that plate. Yeah, that, that's just how Frankie eats now. My sincere apologies if I'm clearly missing something, but I feel that I'm missing a crucial bit of information with regards to your associate being... Frankie's my pet, first off. Secondly, Frankie's not exactly alive. The viewer provides a gesture which is recorded as being a Terran gesture for elaboration. One of the projects I got in tech school was a biology elective, revivification or a partial reanimation. The idea is to teach the basics of organic engine care and maintenance, but the project seemed a bit boring to me, so uh, I created Frankie instead. See reference 4810.8, Accretion Organic Sublight Engine Maintenance. So, am I appropriately understanding that instead of reanimating a block of tissue as you would in an organic engine, you reanimated a living being? Well, it's more of an emergency procedure, but it was fun elect, of course, so uh, I figured why not. As for Frankie, again, he's not exactly alive. But as long as he gets the right jolt, he might outlive me. The large being appeared to laugh at this. If such a reanimation is so simple, why is it not more commonplace, particularly in your medical sciences? I have never heard of such a process before. Well, uh, for one thing, I almost got kicked out by having created Frankie. And for another, the amount of power you need is exponentially proportional to the mass that you're trying to reanimate. So for something your size, we'd need a class 2 fusion battery hooked up to you at all times. For a Terran, well, you'd probably need something like a class 7 fusion reactor hooked up at all times. I see. And so because of Frankie's size, the power requirement is significantly decreased. However, I notice that this Frankie does not wear a battery. That's what the plate is for. Instead of a fusion battery, I just went with the ultra capacitor and taught him to charge himself. Interesting, uh, and just for my understanding, uh, what manner of being is Frankie? Frankie's a ferret, and since I Frankensteined him, I figured Frankie was a solid name. I see. Well, uh, thank you for the information and my rescue, but I believe that I would like to see the captain at her earliest convenience. A debtor log ends. End of story. Story number two. That Doesn't Fit There, written by Admiral Marsupial 3. It was well known that if a human makes a threat that doesn't make sense, be very afraid. Despite appearances, it doesn't mean that they have lost what little sanity that they started with. It means you are unaware of vital context that would let you know how much danger you are currently in. Such as Tarsians, who misunderstood a human who said that they would turn them into a living popsicle. Being from a cold world, they weren't worried about being frozen. They didn't notice the pole beside the human, or what the threat actually meant, until it was too late. Or the Guana, who was unaware of the old human memes, 
This meant that after making very insulting comments to a human who happened to be holding a cactus at the time, they were completely unaware of the danger in the seemingly innocent and confusing question, Is your name Paige by any chance? And, of course, there was the incident of the Cuscans. Due to knowing nothing about human cinema, they were completely unaware of the meaning of I will turn all five of you into a push for Xeno Centipede. When they all got a bit handsy with the tea waitress at a diner that that particular human was a regular of. The one who didn't suffocate never walked straight again. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed. And if you do, please consider supporting the author, even by popping over and leaving a thumbs up or a nice comment just to show your appreciation for the story. However, if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below which will help immensely. I will see you all in the next one. And until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.